I hate you, Ron Burgundy. Hello, welcome. Today we're gonna destroy the lives of many lemons and limes by making a lemon juicer. Honestly, terrible for them, but great for us because look at how chic this is. It's so much chicer than those plastic ones that you can get and the other nice ones are those like glass ones, which are quite nice, or you can get those like squeezy ones. But honestly, this is, this is the best looking one. I don't care what you say, look at it. Today I'm gonna teach you how to make this this very thing. You are gonna need about 400 to 500 grams of clay for this. So I've got that ready. I also have a little bit of clay to attach a bat to the wheel with. And I have a bonus piece of clay here, which is kind of a big daddy piece of clay. And this is gonna be the clay for a chuck. So I'll show you how to throw that at the end. It's basically to trim the lemon juicer upside down in. So if you've got a chuck already, you skip this part, but if you don't, I'll show you. Don't worry about it. Can you please get my Coke? Really want a swig of Coke. That sweet, sweet nectar of the gods. Diet Coke for the talent. Yeah. Ah, she's spicy. Okay, we're gonna start by attaching the bat. This is like 150, 200 grams of clay. I don't know, I just grabbed it out of the bag. You want to center this and kind of like push it down flat as if you're making a plate. And it doesn't matter if it's not centered on the sides, but you have to have it nice and flat on the top. And I'll put a little spiral in it by just dragging my finger down while the wheel is moving. And now we'll attach our bat. So you just want to place the bat down pretty, pretty central and you can kind of just do that by eyeballing it and then turn the wheel on, make sure it's not wildly off center. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to kind of not distract you. And now I'm gonna just kind of punch it down to adhere it to the wheel with um, the ball of my fist. Nice. Now we're gonna get into the good stuff. So this is my 500 gram-ish ball of clay and we're gonna center that on the wheel ran out of battery uh, didn't realize filmed the whole video here we are we're back at square one right we're gonna center this on the bat and when you're throwing on a bat you just kind of pretend that it is the wheel head like it's just an extension of it and sometimes if you're not used to it it feels a bit weird because you're throwing on wood rather than the metal but once you get used to it it's exactly the same I would say that this project is like an intermediate project, but if you are new to throwing, it's quite a fun exercise and I think it gets you to understand um, kind of what the clay is doing a little bit. It's, it's quite fun. So give it a go at all levels, I reckon. Right, I have centered it nice and flat and I am gonna open it up as a wee donut now. I'm gonna open all the way up to the wheel head. So I've got a little donut of clay here. I'm gonna separate a little bit of clay here at the bottom and we're gonna ignore that for now and we'll play with it later. And then we're gonna bring this part here up into the spike. And it feels a little bit weird when you're throwing it. Um, it's almost like backwards pulling up. Like it's, I, I don't know, it feels a bit weird because your inside fingers are lower than your outside fingers and it's usually the other way around. So yeah, it does take a little bit of getting used to. And you also are really concentrating on um, throwing a cone, because you literally are throwing a cone at this point. But don't let the clay flare out because then you're gonna really be battling with it. So really think about making sure your outside fingers are doing more of the work and pulling the clay up from that side rather than pushing it out from the inside. So to get enough clay to um, bring the clay up, you have to kind of dig underneath, create a little um, like channel of clay, a little shelf to pull up from the inside. And 
And so from here, I'm going to start collaring it in a little bit so that it um, really does start establishing that cone shape. And I'm going to pull it up one more time. Collar it in a little bit more. Once you enclose the cone, you can play around with the shaping a little bit more because the air that's trapped inside of that cone can support the, um, support the clay. It's really weird, it feels quite odd. And if you want this shape to be a little bit more bulbous, again, this feels a bit bonkers and a bit weird, you can literally blow into this cone and it will puff up and kind of become a bit more, a bit more nice and round. So I'm going to do that and watch this cone shape kind of uh, plump out a little bit. <laughs> Ridiculous. But it works really well. Now we're going to enclose it just by pinching that top bit closed. I'm going to use my wooden rib tool here to start shaping that. If I was throwing a cylinder at this point and I was using the rib to shape it, I'd be pushing the clay from the inside out. And I'm kind of doing the same thing here, but obviously I can't get inside the cone here. So I'm going to be pushing from this way and it kind of forces the clay into the rib. Now that that is done, I am going to shape this part here, the little well. Right, so I'm going to push down and I'm going to pull the clay up to make that little wall. Just like you would a little bowl or a, um, a little dish. I'm going to do that again. You can kind of shape this however you want, so you can go in with your rib again and make it like a straight wall or you can make it nice and round. I'm going to take a little bit off because I feel like that's a little bit too high for the proportion of the um, spike. I'm just going to use my needle tool and trim the rim. Get that off. Compress that rim a little bit. I'm going to bring that out just to tidy it up. Great, that's pretty much it. So I will go in with my sponge and I will clean up on the inside here. Get rid of any finger marks or gouge marks. Do the same on the outside. And then I will go in with my um, wooden knife tool, that kind of spoon end of it. And I'm gonna cut a little chamfer in the bottom. And that's just like a little channel for the um, wire to be pulled through. Clean up my bat. Pull the wire through. And you might have noticed that I didn't um, get a sponge and remove any of the water that was inside of the spike. And that's because there's no clay for it to absorb into, create um, a weak spot, which would in turn lead to S cracks and things like that. So you don't really have to worry about that. If you've got tons of water in there, then maybe get rid of it because it would probably seep into the other bits. But if it's just a little bit, you should be fine. And now I'm going to create the little lip, the little pouring spout part. And I do that by just wetting my fingers and then kind of rubbing them across the rim. That's maybe an inch wide or so. I've made that quite thin and quite sharp. And then I'm going to go in with my other hand here. I'm going to put uh, my thumb and my index finger either side of that. And I'm going to pull this finger through and that's going to create that little pourer. Nice. And that's it. So I'm going to take this off the wheel let this dry and we'll create the chuck. 
So, a chuck. You don't have to make one every time that you're trimming something like a lemon juicer or a bottle or a vase or something that needs support when you're trimming. If you already have one then you can use that. I've also been known to use like plant pots with a towel inside to trim vases, things that can just like support it. But I want to show you how to do this for this project specifically because you maybe haven't done it before, I'm not sure. And then you will let this dry to leather hard at the same rate as this and then you can trim it inside there. I have a trusty chuck that I have used for a few years and it's like really crusty and old and dry now but I am really attached to it so when I do come to trim this later on in this video you'll see it's a different chuck to the one that I'm making right now. Basically it's just kind of a cylinder, a cylinder that you can use to trim whatever. So you center it as usual. I like to open up to the wheel head with my chucks but you don't have to, you can make it literally a cylinder if you want. You want it to have a wide enough base that it's going to be supported when you are trimming so it doesn't like crumble um, and slip at all. And you want to make sure that it is wide enough to hold the cone part of your lemon juicer but not so wide that it overlaps the bowl part. It just kind of, you want it to sit snugly on the inside. Your chuck should have a nice strong rim, so I'm going to compress that to make sure it is um, quite sturdy. Um, if it's too thick then it will kind of chip off um, and can really easily crack or break while you're trimming. Um, and it's a pain. So that's kind of it. I'm going to leave it at that. You can tidy it up if you want to, but I quite like them when they're like rough and ready. Something about chucks that are like, I don't know, so pottery. You know what I mean? It's like quite a um, quintessential pottery thing to leave it looking a little bit crusty. Nice. All right. So I'll um, trim this off the wheel just as I would a pot so that when it dries, I can take it off the bat. And that's it. So we will leave both of these to dry and I'll be back probably tomorrow or the next day to trim them. Right, welcome back to day two of lemon juices. And in here, wrapped up, is my beautiful trusty and crusty chuck. <laughs> I've had it for years and years and years and um, there was a while where it was green, which was quite nice, where it was kind of mildewy and I cleaned it up a bit and um, now it's kind of dried a bit too much, which is honestly a bit of a shame. Right, we're gonna attach this to the wheel and if it was leather hard, it would be slightly easier to do. Um, but you know what, we're on hard mode, that's cool. So you just wanna center your chuck in the middle of the wheel. And I'm centering the top bit, not the bottom bit, because that's where I'm gonna be trimming. That's pretty good. I'm gonna attach it to the wheel, just some nice big lugs. Great. And we have our leather hard lemon juicer. Um, so what we're gonna do is wet the top of this. And that's gonna stick to this, um, to the bowl part on the inside. You wanna make sure that this is centered on top as well because you can center this, but this can be just, you know, completely skew with. So get that nice in, in the middle. Pretty good. And I'm just gonna gently like press it down and hope that it sticks. We might have a little flyaway lemon juice, I don't know. Fingers crossed we don't. We're gonna start off by flattening this base here. 
So I'm just going to use my um, kind of teardrop shape tool here. And then I'm going to go in and remove this kind of wonky part here where I opened up to the wheel head. And I'll just take out this from the inside. And I really like to go in to the inside and just trim a tiny bit out. And that is because when you enclose that spike part, it, it just makes a really thick piece of clay on the inside there. And it does help to go in with a tool and just kind of just thin it out a tiny bit. So I'm not gonna take that much out. Just the smallest bit. And sometimes, like if you don't do this, you can get a little bit of cracking on the inside and it really doesn't matter. Like it doesn't affect the form at all, as long as it doesn't crack all the way through. But it's quite nice just to, just to thin it out and hopefully avoid some of that cracking. Great. That's that and now we will do the rest of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flatten this base again because I've just shoved a bit of clay there. I'm gonna create a little chamfer on the edge here and then that's kind of it. And I'll make a little chamfer on the inside as well. When you're trimming the outside, like obviously I've got these little bits here and here, which I would like to clean up, but because we've made the wee spout bit, we can't actually trim up to here. So you just have to do your best and only trim around this area of the base so you don't damage this, um, the wee spout. Cool. So that is it for trimming on this side. I'm going to sponge that bit off. I'm not going to sponge the inside because there's loads of trimmings in there still and I want to tip them out. <laughs> but I will go in here and just tidy that up a little bit with my sponge just to soften those kind of gouge marks. Nice. Okay, let's flip that over. I always just dry my hands before I um, remove anything from the wheel so that I don't get any of these little clay trimmings re-adhered to it. And now it's properly stuck. So this is what the inside is looking like. I've trimmed the whole wall and I've kind of left the ridges because it's quite sweet. Um, but there's a little bit of trimmings in there still, but because it's still quite damp, I don't want to dust them out because I'll just stick them back to the clay. And this is the inside, so obviously where it was stuck to the chuck, we've got a little bit of, you can sort of see where that was, so I'll go in with a sponge to start with. Let's remove the chuck from the wheel and then we can work straight onto the wheel head for the rest of it. Okay, so let's tidy up this inside part here. You can sort of do this at the start or the end, it doesn't really matter, we might as well do it now. It's looking pretty good. Now we will take the square end of a loop tool. Um, you can use this or you can kind of use anything if you've got a um, sharp part of your wooden knife tool or I don't know, whatever tool, whatever tool is your favorite. I like using the square end of a loop tool. And I'm just gonna carve out these little ridges to create some texture. So we start at the front, which I don't know if it's a good idea or a bad idea. And I'm gonna just draw a line straight from the bottom up to the top. Nice. And then I'm gonna turn it all the way around and I'm gonna do the exact same on the other side. So it's um, kind of a line over the whole thing. And then I split that half again. Oh my God. <laughs> this is what happens when you slip. That doesn't look good. <laughs> I'll try and work that out. <laughs> and the other, split the other side. I just keep going around and I cut a um, mark in between each half line until it's completely done. A 
Look, you can't even see where I slipped. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, but the sponge will tidy that up in a minute. Great, and that's it. So I'm just gonna go in now with my sponge and get rid of um, kind of these harder cut lines. I'm just gonna get rid of the wee trimmings, the little crumbs, so that they don't stick to the nice surface. And then make sure your sponge isn't too wet at all. You wanna really wring it out. And I just rub it all the way from the bottom to the top. I'm just gonna pop my stamp on the bottom, may we make his mark. Just gouge my thumb into it, so <laughs> go back in with the sponge again, just a little top up. And now that's it. So I'm gonna let this dry and it will be fired and glazed. Um, this is beautiful glossy white glaze that I've used in the past, but um, yeah, kind of anything will work. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope that um, you have fun with this project. It's a really good one to get out of a throwing funk or whatever. It's just quite a fun exercise. And it makes a really beautiful product at the end, I think. Uh, join me again next week for another video on something pottery related. And in the meantime, you can follow me on all the socials. I'm at may.ceramics. Let me know if you have any comments um, or questions, whatever, down below. And I will see you again soon. Ciao.